federal government bars debtors from bidding for oil fields. Barkindo explains current stability in oil prices, plus the creative industry in face of COVID-19 in focus today. This is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA, and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Moplang Dakok. Good to know that you're always with us on Business Express. The federal government is set to implement a program called Green Imperative, which it said would transform agriculture in Nigeria. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, stated this in Abuja at a joint press conference he addressed with the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Sabo Nanono, where it was reiterated that the program worth $1.2 billion is a product of a Nigeria-Brazil bilateral agriculture development program. The program will import completely knockdown parts of about 5,000 tractors and numerous farm implements. This will create 774 service centers nationwide to mechanize our farming methods and process or add value to farm produce locally. This mechanization is going to affect 632 local governments across the country. And there will be accompanied to that 140 processing centers. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, says despite the recent upward trend in crude oil prices, the petroleum industry is not yet out of the woods. Secretary General of the OPEC, Mohamed Barkindo, stated this via video conferencing at the 133rd meeting of the Economic Commission Board. He attributed the current stability in the global crude oil market and the recent rebound in the price of crude oil to the historic OPEC Plus led response to the volatility recorded in the market earlier in the year. Barkindo noted that the pace of the global economic rebound, given the very uncertain economic parts of the world's two largest economies, the US and China, as well as recovery in global trade, would be central to the revival of oil markets. Meanwhile, oil prices eased slightly this Friday as markets wait to see whether major producers will commit to an extension of record production cuts to support oil prices. Brent crude features were down 8 cents at $39.91 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell 15 cents to $37.6 a barrel. Both benchmarks were set for a six weekly gain as countries begin to ease restrictions. And still talking commodity, gold eased ahead of a highly awaited U.S. jobs report this Friday as market spins hope on economic recovery, putting the safe heaven metal on track for a third consecutive week.
Laura Michael Phillips is an event planner. She found her way into the business through passion. Four years down the line, she attests that the unfolding times are peculiar. One might expect a tale of war, but she is turning the situation around. Personally, I also have a planning academy. I run a planning academy. So shortly before the lockdown, I had to move our classes from you know, having it in the classroom to having it online. So that for me has been keeping me busy. And then the fact that you still have people who are looking for what to learn here and there. So in a way, there is still some form of income coming in from that direction. But from planning on its own, a lot of things have been halted. You know, you can't really go ahead even with um, vendors and all of that. So what has really been keeping me busy has been the ac academy for me. For Laura, the world is a global village, so it is expedient to flow with the tide. For a long time, a lot of people have been saying that people should make their businesses digital, try to make your processes digital. The truth is, a lot of people did not see this coming because we're already used to day-to-day -day operations, day-to-day -day talking to people. Many people did not really make um, provision or did not make any kind of arrangements or prepare for a day where we would fully be in a digital age. So somehow it, this has been a wake-up call. Business relationship in some contests in Nigeria has one that thrives on physical communication and interaction. And Laura says the lessons of the COVID-19 outbreak and the need for proper hygiene is far-reaching. As people self-quarantine, conferences, workshops and shows are being put on hold daily while routines are quickly shifting as the world responds to coronavirus. In this unprecedented time, people are shifting their businesses to adapt to new norms. No doubt, the widespread cancellation of in-person events have affected many businesses, including independent artists who rely on events, workshops, gigs, and physical locations to pay their bills. Joining us in the studio via Zoom is uh, a creative industry guru. He is Lancelot Imar Swain. It's a pleasure to have you today with us on Business Express. Hello, Mr. Imar Swain. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. So let's have um, what you think happened to the creative industry in the midst of this uh, COVID-19. How can you assess the level of damage or losses in the industry? I, I, I will be very honest with you, it's inestimable. Uh, uh, yeah, you cannot really, really estimate the uh, amount of damage that has actually happened to the creative industry. And I want to say that uh, we are uh, the hardest hit as far as uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned. Uh, we are going to look at it from a very, very broad uh, spectrum. Uh, you know, everything about entertainment uh, um, outside of um, the digital uh, content presentations, majority of entertainers uh, do their stuff with uh, the help of crowd. Our business is uh, uh, crowd-oriented. Uh, you want to look at um, the cinema, you need the crowd. You want to look at... Um, uh, the, the the process of making the content you need a crowd you want to look at um, musical concerts you need crowd uh, almost every other business outside of fine artists even when fine artists they finish their work they still need to go for exhibition they still need crowd and uh, these are the needs almost every area of our of, of, of the creative uh, uh, enterprise in Nigeria or globally have been so adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so since the industry has been so uh, adversely affected by the virus, um, many other businesses have been leveraging on digital platforms for their businesses during this period. How has the creative industry been able to do that? Yeah, just one way, and that is um, through um, providing content for digital viewing, uh, content online. Um, well, there have been some upside of sales for uh, content 
those that already has content for digital platforms, um, those at home watching on television. But I can assure you that a sizable number of people or practitioners will want to make a film, big budget film, and go through the cinema route where uh, you are expected to make the bulk of sales before you start to go into digital platforms. Because the digital platform does actually provide um, 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 the kind of money that the, the cinema platform will provide at a go. Uh, th 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 this is going to be very terrible. Uh, a lot of production uh, values, a lot of production, uh, the, the, the sizes of production are going to shrink to, to, to meet with the, the present demand. If it's just going to be uh, distribution only by the digital format, then nobody wants to want to spend so huge millions in making movies anymore. We want to string our stories we want to string the number of uh, crew members we are using. We want to string the number of cast that will be playing so that uh, we won't be running at a loss. That is going forward. All right. It is said that once there's a will, there's a way. So in the midst of the pandemic, how can uh, people in the creative industry be able to uh, take it as an opportunity, you know, to make their millions? Oh, right. We are, we are already about that as I speak. Like now, I, I personally, I've seen myself commissioning uh, a one-man story, a uh, one-woman story, uh, trying to shrink the, 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 the number of crews you will be needing on set. And uh, we are thinking along that line. But whichever way, however you look at it, people are going to be affected. A story that you probably would have told with um, a reasonable uh, uh, crowd. And when you bring this boat in with me, you're going to earn money. But now we are now uh, compelling the, the uh, scriptwriters to please um, let's look for stories that will just be one cast, that will just be two casts, that will just be three casts. Meanwhile, those ones before, they are special art films. Special art films, you say, you say oh, I'm making the film. It's just four persons in the film. But now it's going to be the norm. It's going to be the norm, and um, a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs. A lot of people will not find jobs to do because uh, you just have to be so good. If I want to cast a, a, a particular individual for 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 a, a, a one man story, then that person must be good enough to sustain and hold and hold the uh, audience for that uh, length of time. So, uh, come see, come sir. Uh, it, it's not really going to be uh, that good, but that is the reality we are adjusting now to the honest reality of ground. All right, still talking about opportunities in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, other countries have what they call drive-in cinemas, where you just drive in and sit in your car to watch movies. Um, is Nigeria already thinking of that, or what are we expecting to see post-COVID-19? Oh, sure. Um, I saw a particular cinema uh, that's trying to experiment that. Even um, recently in Abuja, there was a state play uh, waiting for Godot that was staged, and uh, it's a driving uh, theater. Uh, innovations are going to come in, no doubt. Uh, we see how all other worked. Uh, but you and I know that, uh, they, like the cinema, for instance, the fun of it is the fact that everybody is yelling, everybody is. Uh, excited and communicating with each other. People are picking the character they prefer. People are already discussing. So that's the difference between the cinema and watching at home. All that we're going to lose. So when you don't take like two or three persons within your car to stay in a drive, a driving cinema, the, feel, the feeling is not going to be the same as when you're watching in a, a, a web-based cinema structured uh, uh, environment. But these are, these are all temporary measures I think that will work for the now, and uh, hoping that uh, we get back our lives the way it used to be and go back to the way things uh, used to be. All right, the lockdowns are gradually easing right now in most parts of the country. So do you th have uh, productions started? Have they begun over the country? 
Oh yes, yes. Production has started. Like well, I, right at the venue we are talking now. I just rounded up uh, the final casting for a new film that I'm doing on a uh, on a um, Down syndrome, uh, an advocacy film for uh, Down syndrome. The way people with Down syndrome are treated in society, even from parents and friends. Of the, we are working on that, but we or the audition was done online. Um, several over a hundred uh, persons. Uh, submitted their monologue online and uh, we shot this uh, the few that came uh, that, that were that were uh, accepted uh, through the the online um, monologue were asked to come today and of course uh, all of the measures uh, safety measures are put in place everybody is face mask everybody is uh, there is a lot of uh, hand sanitizers and uh, social distancing um, uh, taking seriously into consideration. Even planning for the production itself, we have ordered for the plastic face masks for the crew members, uh, those that are usually having contact with people, like the makeup artists, like the costume designers, like the, the sound man. We are looking, we have, uh, we have uh, ordered for uh, uh, the plastic uh, uh, face mask for them. Uh, I feel that is really, really, uh, that would be good enough for us to use. And um, we are putting uh, 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 putting things in place. Uh, we have ordered for um, non uh, toxic uh, uh, disinfectants that any location we enter will be disinfected. When we are leaving, it's also done. And all of these measures put in place. It's a new world, and we are adapting to it. But I can assure you that productions are starting in several places country. All, all right, let me ask you about... Um, I am right now. Let me ask you about producers of online videos. There are so many online videos on the digital platforms now that are trending. Uh, what do you say to those people in terms of making their money even in the midst of COVID-19, you know? I, I think those guys were the guys that saw, that they saw the future, <laughs> if you ask me. They were already within their comfort zone. And uh, now the market has come to meet them. Uh, I want to say kudos to them. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, upsurge of that. A lot of people are getting uh, YouTube channels and uh, uh, trying to produce more and more content. Uh, well, we have to take a lot into cognizance. Uh, what kind of content can you produce for the online, the, the quality of content and uh, the kind of stories that you can uh, tell? But like this, we are all going to try to adapt. So. I want to tell them, kudos, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, a lot are coming up. And you see uh, a lot of programs, a lot of entertainers are finding stuff to do online. And uh, that doesn't just provide money on the immediate. You need to build it over time. So those that were there before are rightly so in, on a, uh, at advantage over those that are just coming in uh, uh, at this moment, being driven by the reality of the COVID-19 to get good online. But there are guys that have been online from, from time in memoria. They don't make any movie for cinema. They don't make movies for or create content for television. They, do, they are online producers, uh, content providers, and they now is their time. So they were the guys that saw the future, and I say kudos to them. All right, before I let you go, uh, where do you see the creative industry in the next few months? as we battle COVID-19 and even post-COVID-19? Right. Uh, I think we are going to see more sensitive productions. Almost all of the productions now, we are conscious of the, um, of the reality of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. People are getting more and more uh, conscious of it in terms of the safety. Uh, but also we get back because for a lot of people, for me, this is my 25th year. I don't have any other job. So we must finally keep it going. And uh, we are hoping and believing that the uh, government will actually come to our aid and also adjust the environment to suit up. Now, there's no better time for us as a country to have film villages around the country. Uh, you know, most of the on location, most of the movies you see are shot on locations. Uh, which means you have to barge into people's homes. But with this kind of pandemic, that, that poses some kind of challenge. 
This is where the need for a film village comes in places that are uh, domesticated, uh, places that are put on uh, 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 put out for the purpose of film productions and adjustable to whatever story you want to tell. There is no better time going forward for every state of Nigeria, every uh, region, uh, the entire country to begin to look at this area uh, for a better investment for the entertainers in Nigeria. All right. Filmmakers particular. Thank you very much, Mr. Imaswen, for your time with us. We've been speaking to the AIDS filmmaker Lancelot Imaswen. Let's see how the Naira is exchanging for other international currencies. market trading closed on a downward note as asia pacific stocks were mixed ahead of u.s jobs uh, the oil share index depreciated by minus 1.17 percent to close at 25,016.30 basis points 214.4 million shares valued at 2.5 billion naira were traded in 4342 deals while market capitalization closed at 13.049 trillion naira zenith bank fidelity bank and guarantee trust bank all of the financial industry topped trading activity this friday top losers were dongote cement boa cement and nigerian breweries let's now see how stocks were faring on the global market and Bossa de Abel has the global stock market update. The last trading day in the week saw global stocks soaring as investors awaited the U.S. Labor Department's latest jobs reports. U.S. stock futures were sharply higher. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures implied an opening gain at the open, while S&P 500 and Nasdaq futures were a bit lower. European markets rallied in early trading of Friday 6th June as investors digested an expansion of the European Central Bank's bond buying program and awaited the U.S. non-farm pay reports due in the day. Stocks in Asia were higher. In Japan, the Nikkei rose 0.74% to close at 22,863.73. Hansen index jumped 1.66 percent as of its final hour of trading and the shanghai composite topped 0.40 percent africa stocks opened mostly positive with namibia's overall index nairobi's all share tunisia's tunidex ghana's gsa composite and south africa's gsa africa top 40 appreciating and this is where we draw the curtain on today's episode of Business Express. Don't forget you can access all previous episodes on YouTube and you can communicate with us on Twitter. The handle is at NTA News Now. The hashtag is BizX. We value your feedback, so join us again on Monday next week for another package. And as we continue to fight COVID-19, remember to keep social distance and wash your hands with soap under running water. I am Muplang Dakok.